So we've come to the end of the year and it's finally that time where we start setting resolutions for the new year. But I think this practice has kind of gotten a bad rep because a lot of people think that even though I set new resolutions, I end up not doing them. So why even bother in the first place? Personally, I love setting new year resolutions because it's just so motivating to me to set a goal that I can work towards throughout a year. I think it's also my personality type. I'm really sentimental. So I like to look back in my year and see how far I've come. And even for the goals that I didn't complete, I always just like to see how close I've gotten to them so that I know how much more I can work on in the new year. And since you guys always ask me about goal setting, I thought I'd make a whole video on how I make my new year resolutions and I hope these tips are useful for you. So when it comes to goal setting, there's actually a step-by-step -step process behind it. I start first with reflection. And this is super critical because you need to know where you are in order for you to know where you want to go. And this is where I like to do the exercise called the peaks and the pits of the year. This is essentially your highlights and your lowlights. In 2019, one of the greatest highlights for me was to finally graduate from university because it's something that I've been trying to pursue for four and a half years and to finally be able to do it was just such a great um, accomplishment for me. I also got to create a lot more videos on YouTube and to actually connect with more people and to expand our audience. As for the lowlights of my year, I think that my sleep and my health really took a hit because I was not prioritizing it, which I told myself I would do more of this year. But because of work, I definitely put that on the back burner. And this is why I love to write things down because I actually have a physical representation of the good and the bad things that happened in my year so that I can look back, reflect on what I've accomplished, what I need to work on and this really helps me in terms of writing my resolutions for the new year. And when it comes to reflection, even if you had a bad year, I think that it's still really important to do. You know, a lot of the times when you think that the year has been really bad for you or you've not accomplished anything and like what's the point of reflecting, it was just, just I don't want to remember it pretty much. You also want to just find small things throughout the year that you are grateful for and I'm sure Sure, you can find them. Wrapping up your year just on a more grateful note gives you that little sense of motivation and it just goes to show that, you know, the next year can be better. And once you're done with your reflection, it's now time for the actual goal setting. My method for goal setting is pretty unconventional, but I have a lot of fun. So I like to write down everything I want to accomplish in a year and it might be impractical, crazy, and I go wild, but I pretty much spill out everything I want to accomplish. I've got things like, oh, I want to record my music. Like, I want to stay like one month in Bali. I want to open like a, a chicken breast catering service. <laughs> Super weird. This all sounds really ballistic and obviously I didn't end up like accomplishing them this year. But it's just really nice to get it out there and to see, you know, a few years down whether or not it's actually possible for me to achieve. And it also shows me what's actually at the forefront of my consciousness and my wants and uh, finding different aspects of my life that maybe are unfulfilled that I want to explore. So looking at all the things that you want, it's pretty much your wish list. You can start to pick out things that are realistic and practical for you to achieve in a year. It doesn't mean that the other goals are obsolete. You can still keep them and who knows, maybe five years down the road, you can eventually accomplish them. So now it's about specificity and once you've shortlisted your goals, you want to make sure that they are actionable. So a lot of the times, clients and friends, they want to start eating healthy as their goal. But the problem is that eating healthy is not really specific and it's not as actionable as say, I want to start eating a salad a day or I want to start limiting my cheat meals to only once or twice a week. See, these are quantifiable goals that you can actually see and track if you've accomplished. And when it comes to exercising, you know, I want to exercise more, I, I want to get fit, it's not an actionable goal. Something like I want to start working out three times a week for 30 minutes a day or I want to be taking a short walk every other day. I think that is a lot more achievable and attainable than just giving yourself a general goal of I want to get fit, I want to go to the gym. And I can promise you, whenever I hear someone make a general goal at the beginning of the year, you can pretty much bet that they're not going to accomplish it. So the next thing you want to do is to give yourself a deadline. Even though resolutions are your entire year's plan, it's great for you to break them down into different quarters or even months so that you can spread out your goals throughout the year. For example, if your goal is to work out three times a week, then frame it in this way. I want to make working out three times a week a habit by April. By doing something like that, you know, you actually have something to look forward to rather than just waiting till the end of the year and going like, oh no, I haven't accomplished this. So even in January and February, if you know you're not accomplishing it, then there's almost a sense of urgency that you have to make it a goal for yourself that you want to achieve by April. And just keep your goals simple. In my experience, 
experience, it's a lot better to have a few goals that you can focus on rather than to have a whole list of goals that you never end up accomplishing. Another reason why I feel a lot of people don't accomplish their resolutions is because they lack the why. It really means like their motivation. Why is this goal important to me? Why is it important that I achieve it this year? And I think that, you know, a lot of times we're like, oh, we need to do this, 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 all these actions. But at the same time, I think it's also important to identify the driving force behind it. For me, the why to stay healthy is because I know that I can thrive a lot more in other aspects of my life. I can serve a lot better as a personal trainer, as a friend, and also as a family member. If you have a goal and you don't really have a reason for why you want to achieve it, then it's a very high chance that you're not going to end up doing it because you, know, you don't even see the purpose, you don't see the point. But if you start to attach real motivation to to it and people to it and causes that you strongly believe in it makes your goal a lot more concrete and then you feel a lot more purposeful in what you do this year one of my biggest goals was to release the no sweat app and the why for that was because since last year i've been getting a lot of emails from women everywhere all walks of life who want to start working out and getting fit but didn't have the means to i felt that the app was my way of reaching out to them inspiring them and empowering them to start exercising and getting healthy and that was my real driving force last year that um, really kept me going and I'm really glad that it was a resolution that I was able to accomplish. So this is how I personally set my new year resolutions and I hope these tips were useful for you. In the new year, I'm sure a lot of you have health and fitness as your resolution and it's pretty much the case that a lot of us kind of say like, you know, I want to make this year the year and then it comes to the next year and you want to be like, yo, this is the year but let next year 2020 actually be the year where you make health and fitness your priority and on that front i totally got you covered go to your respective app stores and download the no sweat fitness app there you'll receive personalized training programs from me according to your fitness goals whether you want to lose weight tone up or just improve your overall well-being you also get other perks like one-on-one -on -one fitness assessments with me and I personally respond to each and every single one of them, access to our live stream chats and workouts, and even exclusive invites to meetup sessions. When you sign up, you get your first week free and after which you have the option of signing up for a one-year, three-month or one-month plan. And if you join the one-year plan, you also get a free set of no sweat resistance bands. The bands are also available on our No Sweat merchandise store, so head on over there if you want a light and compact way to get resistance into your workout. Lastly, if you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you never miss a notification every time we post a new video. Or you can download the Click Network app to get early access to our videos before they hit YouTube. So I'll see you guys next year. Take care. Bye!